Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Now. We're in round three of the winner's bracket of LA Land upper right corner. We have Tim starting as the red Protoss, bottom left in corner. We have Megalisk starting as the black Zerg. This is on Polypoid. And I'm gonna favor Tim because this is cross spawn and we've seen Megalisk. Again, I, I think he just, he likes playing the aggressive Zergling Flood style play. He might go th for a lot of two hatch Hydra or maybe even three hatch busts here. But I remember that he's uh, an early aggressive player rather than kind of the long-term macro player. He might pull something out like Rancor does, where he goes for a lot of aggression early and then pulls back some macro, but I have yet to see him do that any ma in any match that comes to mind. Overlords move him bottom right-hand corner first. I also feel like at cross positions, it ends up favoring Protoss a little bit more, because especially if you go for Forge Expand, although it looks like there's a probe hanging out here, so this might be Gateway first. But if you go for the uh, Forge Expand, it's just a little bit, you have you know, longer rush distances gives you a little bit more time to work with. And also there's like more room if you're doing for those off timing zealot rushes to sneak. There's just a lot more area to lose the zealots out midfield. There's more space for them to scramble around like Madman Overlord being produced. And there is that gateway and initial probe scout going to go to that bottom right hand corner. We are seeing looks like a nine or sorry, an overpool opposite corner from Megalisk. And so he should be a well okay against this. And that is going to force Tim once he scouts this, and he should... Well, no, okay. Popped, okay, so we looked for the Overlord at the 3 o'clock location. Upon not seeing the Overlord, he's now going to travel up or left. Clever, clever. Uh, and try to play from there. Unfortunately, in that... And I think he w he's going to... This might play out for him, though. Because assuming that he's not bottom right, and he's going top left, he, I believe, is going to correctly guess bottom left. And I think he's going to come across that drone on its scouting path. But anyway, with initial Zerglings that are produced out of this, the Zealots are going to need to get back in a defensive position, and well, let's see how many Zerglings are produced, though. Second round of Zerglings need a little bit more minerals if they're going to come online. Looks like we are getting at least initial four Zerglings to deal with this first Zealot. Now Tim making his way bottom left. Megalisk still has no idea of the opener and isn't going to see that initial Zealot coming across the field, but once he gets inside the base, he's going to know it's coming, which will put it, like, I think maybe even in Overlord Vision range, depending on what path it takes. Zerglings holding the ramp to go ahead and engage... Well, I was going to say holding the ramp to kill that probe, but instead pushing away back. Gas getting cancelled from Megalisk. So initially planting gas, now cancelling it upon seeing the gate opener. Tim was looking to maybe plop down a hatchery. Now we could come down to a little bit of a macro battle. Or, sorry, a micro battle, and Never mind, it was lost before it began. The Nexus planting. So, yeah, canceling gas. Megalisk just going to go all in with Zerglings. So, producing a steamroll of Zerglings. And now, Forge in the way, but it's going to be two Zealots versus a lot of Zerglings incoming. And Megalisk just going to go, it looks like three hatch. Wow, just three hatch Ling potentially after this. So, is scooting up to grab that nine o'clock location. Keep in mind, this, these are non-speed upgraded Zerglings. Hammering away at that gateway before that additional Zealot's produced. Zealot coming off the line. Now the Zealot's swinging their way out. They need to be careful they don't get surrounded and wiped off. Some probes now pulling off the line to respect the threat. Are we seeing additional... Okay, no, no additional Zerglings coming across. So I, where I was expecting like more all-in Zergling play, it looks like he is going to just force this back. Let's see if he draw. He still has a lot of Zerglings here, though, to go for a bus. Probes pulling out to go ahead and engage. And it looks like only four Zerglings remaining. That gateway has taken a serious amount of damage. That cannon going to warp in, and that should force these Zerglings back. Zelt taking a bit of damage as it's pinned in that edge, but this is going to give Tim... Well, we'll see how it plays out. This is should give Tim a sizable economic situation. Probes. Come on, probes. Your war is done. Get back out of there. I'm actually doing an end around. This, the probe... Might be able to sneak back up, confirm, and this is that'll be huge, especially against a player like Megalisk. Looks like Zergling Speed not being upgraded. Instead is, well, let's see if he just straight up tr tries to swing back around and, ha and uh, saturate these bases. But Tim is going to be able to confirm everything with uh, this probe sneaking in the base. He's going to, this is going to be a very late, so Lair is morphing. There was a lot of harassment on the front, but uh, usually you want the Spire planted by the time that I believe it is the well, I'm not going to say it because otherwise I'm going to probably be wrong and end up looking silly. Three Zelts marching the way across 
I'm looking for that Stargate, because if that Stargate drops, I don't think Megalisk is going to be in... He's going to have a hard time defending his overlords and might even need to get an evolution chamber down to start defending them. So one of them is already going to be sacrificing its life, for sure. But uh, regardless, yeah, it just feels like the Spire is going to come down really, really late to deal with it. <clears throat> so let's see if he folds back to Hydralisk. Probe checking, trying to find that third base, not finding anything as of yet. Zergling's kind of scanning everywhere to see what they can see. But Tim right now has a decent sized zealot force, is going to get plus one weapons, didn't lose that gateway on the front. Is going to be in a... So the Spire, yeah, I think uh, if I'm recalling correctly, the Spire should plop by the time the Stargate's halfway finished. Something wrong there. First Corsarian production, Citadel of Adun behind it to potentially get go more tech or DT style. We do have that second gas in place to really make that roll. Fourth hatchery now on the front. But yeah, Tim rolling into the base is going to be able to see everything. And on top of that, see the Spire in the situation it's in. Zergling's actually able to sneak through somehow past the Zealots. Probes pulling off the line, getting the cannon down, getting at least one probe. Now the Corsair moving out. The two Zerglings, however, running free in the main. They're going to be able to see the state of things. So that Spire, not yet halfway finished. Is just, oh man, I wish it would go after... This is one of those situations where I wish this uh, the Corsair was instead going straight out to pick off some of these overlords out in the field because they'd be able to get some free kills and instead by dealing with the free overlord that's in the main that could have been killed later gonna be giving away some free overlords that's okay second corsair produced and it's gonna take some scourge in the air to regain map control or air control i should say it looks like burrow being up i that was a complete accident that i caught that but burrow being upgraded maybe to be annoying get these zerglings and let them st oh, wow Great play, Megalisk. So just going to burrow this. Is that going to force a cannon? That is forcing a cannon. But the Zergling can just run back out after the initial shot. And, uh... <laughs> and go ahead and, and play from there. But anyway. Tim now back... And even gets the probe back out. Nice. So, let's see if we... We are likely... Well, let's see if we'll see Dark Templar in a moment here. I kind of like the Zergling pocketed to provide some information. More Zerglings flooding their way across. Zealots, however, sneaking underneath. No Evolution Chamber drop or uh, morph as of yet. Spines being upgraded, but I don't see a Hydra Den any place. A lot of hatcheries in place, though. Am I just... Yeah, I, that's unusual. So, Zerglings fielded on the front. I'm wondering if they're going to commit now, now that these Zealots are down here, or if they're going to come back to home. Zealots starting to plug this front. The Zerglings burrowed. Yeah, just going to make their way back. That's emptying the natural expansion. They're going to sweep around. Those two Zealots should make short work of that Sutton colony. And now Megalus economy, which is already not in the most amazing of situations, was kind of, a, was kind of shaky. Now getting peeled away. Zealots have plus one weapons, which means they just chew through these Zerglings extremely rapidly. Megalus is going to GG right there. <clears throat> Tim well played top to bottom. Megalisk had some opportunities. I gotta say, that Zergling burrowed in the base was kind of cute, though. I like that. I want to see Zeki pull that off at some point. I wonder how much, how costly that is uh, overall. Like, I mean, it's really costly because 100 gas is nothing to sneeze at mid-game, but to, like, get that level of scouting information or maybe even blockade a gateway being dropped and things like that, it forces 100... Anyway, theory crafting from there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.